the Bi Robot Tabletop Drone Fighter. So this drone is the perfect size because you can do a lot of acrobatics with it and it's large enough to carry a 720p camera, which is one of the accessories, but you won't hurt anyone unless you fly it directly into their eye or their long hair. It's got about a 10 minute flight time, uh, but the cool thing is that it's got IR emitters and sensors so that you can fire USB missiles at other drones. It really works best if you have more than one. In fact, it'll do flying configurations up to four so that you can have these sort of flying quad rotor battles or whatever. Uh, that's really cool in terms of IR emission because each quad rotor has its own infrared emitter and receiver If you know one of the enemy quad rotors manages to land an infrared hit on you know the, the target quad rotor uh, It'll behave differently depending on what weapon was fired from the enemy quad rotors A direct bomb hit can cause the motors to stall out entirely for about five seconds Scores kept by the drones themselves and, and that sort of thing So it's a really sort of fun interesting quad rotor game This little fellow supports different flight modes as well The two main modes are absolute mode and normal mode Absolute mode means that the gyroscope in the quad rotor keeps track of its orientation and forward, backward are always the same relative to the pilot, no matter the orientation of the quad rotor. So in normal mode, backward, forward, etc., is relative to the orientation of the quad rotor itself. There's a front of the quad rotor and a, and a back of the quad rotor, and you know, left and right side. And when you press those controls, it'll move in the direction without taking into account its spin. And so this is normal, like think about like how you would pilot a, you know, a radio control helicopter or a radio control airplane or a radio controlled car. It is always, you know, normal mode. But in absolute mode, it's actually a little easier when you're flying a quad rotor like this because when you press up or down or left or right, it's gonna move in those cardinal directions relative to you not relative to the quad rotor. So it actually makes flight a little easier, although acrobatics can be a little bit more challenging. Absolute mode is definitely a lot easier for noobs to master. So it's easy to toggle between the two modes. Um, you just sort of hold down the settings button and then you hold the red button down and it'll toggle the mode. And then in the manual um, on the website, which is quite good, it's quite well documented. I was very surprised by that because usually when you get stuff like this, it's like, I don't know, it's gonna be some English, I don't know but it was actually really good. And then you can hold the two red buttons down on the top and actually see the configuration. The, the LEDs will blink in a certain pattern depending on what the specific points of configuration are. Another cool thing is the simulator. Now you don't even have to buy one of these. You can go to the website right now and download the simulator and play with it. But the cool thing about the simulator is that the simulator can interface with the remote that the quad rotor comes with through USB. So you can plug this controller into your computer and use it like a controller with this simulator. And so you can learn to fly the quad rotor in the simulator, which is great because you're not gonna destroy your propellers and motors and people around you and eyeballs and <laughs> other stuff like that, so. Out of the box, you get the drone, some rotor guards, two battery packs, one for the quad rotor and one for the remote, although they use the same type of battery pack, a USB charger, um, a standard micro USB cable, and four spare rotors. Now take care when replacing the rotors. There's actually two different kinds of rotors. So if you put the one, wrong one on, it's not gonna fly. One kind of propeller generates lift uh, when turning counterclockwise, and the other one generates lift when turning clockwise. And they're, they're set on opposite corners so that the quad rotor is balanced um, when it's spinning so that you don't have any sort of weird forces and so that it will fly correctly. There are about 40 LEDs on the quad rotor and it supports the IR combat situations I've mentioned before with up to four independent quad rotors. And so of course it comes with some different stickers that you can use on the plastic components um, to sort of decorate it however you want, depending on if oh, it's, I'm normally red or I'm normally blue or, or whatever. One cool accessory is the camera. The camera is tiny and powered by the quad rotor itself. It does come with a four gig micro SD card on which it records photos and videos at 1280 by 720 or 720p. That four gig card will hold about an hour of footage, give or take. It also has this nifty USB adapter that lets you load the video on your phone from the SD card via USB on the go, or you can use it as a regular computer USB memory adapter. Installation of the camera on the quad rotor is pretty easy, but you can't really fly it with the rotor guards and the camera both installed. So make sure you're a decent pilot before embarking with the camera. One thing when switching between with and without rotor guards and with and without the camera is that you will need to trim the gyros to make it fly well. Be sure to check out the manual for the trim procedure. And actually I think that, you know, out of the box, it, they come pretty well trimmed, 
but you should go through the trim procedure again just to make sure that it, it flies because it's a lot easier to fly and it's a lot easier to fly accurately if you've put a little work into trimming it so that the, the quad rotor is basically stationary when it takes off and your hands are off the controls. If you, you know, launch the quad rotor and it's sort of drifting to the left or right, front and back, you can trim that out of it so that when your hands are off the controls, the quad rotor is basically not moving at all. Another accessory you can get for this is the four slot battery charger that'll charge four batteries at once. This is cool if you also order some extra batteries. Um, four slots is enough that if you've got batteries to fill that, you can basically fly this thing continuously because it only takes about 20 or 30 minutes to charge the batteries and the discharge time is on the order of about 10 minutes. It's a little less when you get the camera. I'd say it's probably closer to seven minutes with the camera, but without the camera, nine, 10 minutes, something like that. It's pretty good. While messing around with these, I also managed to burn out one of the motors by getting some hair caught in the motor. Sorry, intern number four. Fortunately, a replacement pair of motors was just $9 and no permanent harm done. I like that it's modular and I like that it was really easy to replace the motors uh, when I screwed it up. So that was nice. The firmware on the quad rotor is also upgradable through USB, though I couldn't find any custom firmwares. You guys will need to buy these and hack the crap out of them so we can do other cool stuff with the USB. Way back a long time ago, many years ago, I built an RC-10, uh, it's a remote controlled truck, that would follow another RC-10 with an IR beacon. That was a lot of fun, because I would drive the RC with the IR beacon, and then another RC would follow that RC, and it was really great fun for about 20 minutes until the batteries gave out. We need to do that, but with quad rotors. So that's been the Byrobot Tabletop Drone Fighter. Have you picked up one of these? You know, they're, they're sort of fun toys. It's a toy. It's not gonna kill you if you run into somebody, unless you run into somebody's eye, in which case that's bad, or possibly their hair. But I had a lot of fun playing with these. Um, you really need to get more than one if you're gonna get, you know, one. If you're thinking about getting a larger quad rotor, this would definitely be a good platform to learn on because it's not gonna, you know, destroy anything if you do any sort of mispiloting. The camera was a lot of fun to play with, but I think if you're gonna do the fighter thing, you're probably not gonna use the camera because the, the camera definitely adds a bunch of inertia. It makes it a, a noticeably more sluggish. But it's kind of cool because you can get okay quality video out of it when you're flying it around. So it's sort of fun. You can control the camera, like whether or not it's recording video or whether or not it takes a picture from the remote, which is a nice touch. Overall, as a toy, I had a lot of fun playing with these. Um, if you've got one or something like this, come over to the forums and let's talk toys that are quad rotors and basically autonomous, because that'd be a lot of fun. I'll see you in the forums. It's Wendell, signing out. Mm -hmm.